Our room is uh, filling up this morning, and we certainly appreciate you uh, taking the time uh, to do that. I'm going to uh, shut my camera off here and turn it over to Ray. And I know, Ray, uh, everybody that's in the room uh, has seen the introduction, knows who Ray is, so I'm not going to go through the uh, the formal introduction again, but Ray, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I'll have my microphone on and, uh, you know, be happy to make any uh, comment and uh, uh, we can go for there. So th this, and as I, I, I posted earlier today, and I just, uh, those of you that may have not seen that post that I made on the Sabatine page earlier today, you know, this is a presentation that Ray does in a 90-day training that people pay a lot of money for uh, to, to receive this exact same training. And uh, all of you, uh, very honored as part of Saba team uh, to be able to, uh, to get it just for joining us here uh, on the webinar. So Ray, we personally want to thank you for that and uh, go ahead and turn it over uh, to you, Ray Higdon. All right, thanks. Can't I, I just want to make sure you can still hear me, right? Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't know I would need my camera. Let me. I can attempt to put this thing on. Let me see. No, I'm certainly not all fancied up. That's for sure. Let's see. There we go. There we go. All right. There we there go. You are. All right. Got my hair, hair are rocking. <laughs> straight, straight back from uh, straight from uh, gymnastics class with the kids. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just took. Uh, we just got back from gymnastics. Took my uh, took my daughter there. So uh, cool. Okay. All right. Great. Let's uh, let's rock and roll. Let's make it happen. I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing comments here. What's going on, guys? You doing well? Happy Saturday. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing. So uh, like Gary said, appreciate you hopping on here. What's up, Aaron and Danielle and Deb and Sue, Renee. Very cool. All right. Okay. Checking my gauges here. Okay. All right. So this is a, uh, this is a presentation that uh, to help you really with hitting your goals. And here we are, we're in January, uh, you know, the new year. I think a lot of people set their goals around the new year. And so I want to help you with you probably unless you've really studied growing uh, or setting goals, I should say, you probably are going to hear some things you've never heard before, you know, setting goals and, and going after um, fast, you know, big growth has been a, just a topic that we've studied for a really long time and, and really, you know, played big with. So uh, hopefully this will this will help you out. All right. So some questions for you and feel free to, to, to type in the, you know, type in the, the com I think it's the comment box, I guess it's called, or the chat. Uh, how would you feel if you started hitting every goal you set for your life and your business? Would that be cool? Would that be awesome? Would that be maybe a, di a little different? I'm just curious. Feel free to participate. Amazing. I see fabulous over the moon. Very nice. Awesome. And what if you knew you could accomplish anything you wanted by just following a simple process? Most people, I'll tell you, most people, they set, they set goals and they really, they're missing a couple key ingredients to ever hit those goals. And we'll cover those ingredients and we'll, we'll help you out with that here today. So I'm, I'm excited to be on here. And, you know, real, real quickly, I mean, I think hopefully by now, let me, let me ask this question. Um, okay. All right. There we go. Uh, let me ask this question. So how many of you, this is your very first training on with me. I know I've done quite a few for Saba. Is there anyone that you're like, this is my first Ray. Cause I missed, you missed all the previous trainings. Anybody? I mean, I'll go real quickly through this part. Okay, so I, so I think, all right, go Colts. <laughs> Alicia, there we go. All right, so I always know, I always know that, you know, no matter how many I've done either for um, our audience or, you know, our clients or a company, I always know there's going to be some people that this is like their very first exposure. So 
Alicia and anyone else that this is your first training, I would highly suggest go back and listen to some of our other audios. Of course, if you like this, all right, if you're like, oh my God, this is terrible, then don't bother. But um, you know, if you like this kind of content, you may want to go through because Gary, we've done uh, quite a few hours of training with you guys now, haven't That's we? Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and you guys have them all archived. You got them all, you know, you can listen to them over and over and over. So I, I think that if you enjoy this kind of kind of training, then I, th I think you'll enjoy that because we cover, you know, social media. We cover uh, prospecting cold market, warm market, uh, overcoming objections. We answer some some good questions, et cetera. So really, really quick about me, um, you know, just so you know that you don't have to have an amazing um you know, background or resume or success pattern for you to create success. Real quick about me, I didn't finish high school on time, um, never finished college. Uh, I probably will go back at, at some point. I'm pretty proud my, my son is now a freshman at Florida State University, so that's pretty cool. Um, I left the uh, corporate world to pursue my dreams only to lose it all and, and end up in foreclosure. Uh, I'd worked my way to a pretty, pretty good salary in, in the corporate world and to just realize that it wasn't where I wanted to be. And it, you know, my future in that world just didn't appeal to me. And I was spending more time with pictures of my kids than the real theme. And so I left the corporate world to start my own business. And uh, that worked out until it didn't. And when the market changed, I got totally crushed and lost it all and ended up in personal foreclosure. My wife and I actually became the number one incomers in a network marketing company that I joined while in foreclosure. And we love to show people how to accomplish their goals, regardless of where they are, regardless of what obstacles they have. And uh, I'm going to help you guys with that here today. Uh, since then, uh, you know, we just for full disclosure, we no longer actively build a network marketing team. We felt that it would be more congruent if we weren't doing that, if we wanted to impact the profession as a whole, which is what we're what we're focused on. So, um, you know, last year we actually did sell our network marketing position and decided to focus on the profession. Um, our coaching training business hit the Inc. 5000 this past year, which means it's one of the fastest growing uh, companies in America. Uh, top 1000 actually is pretty cool. And uh, I've also been able to been blessed, share the stage with Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, Robert Kiyosaki, Les Brown, and a whole lot more amazing individuals. And, uh, you know, this says tonight, but it really means today. Uh, today, I'm going to give you my best advice for setting and crushing your goals. I'm going to share with you what to avoid in your goal setting that most people most people actually, you know, uh, they don't avoid, I guess they, they actually utilize and then how to seriously make the big leap. So um, hope you have a, a pad and a pen and pay close attention. And by the way, if, if I were you, I would be texting your teammates and telling them to get on this webinar. Uh, we will take some questions toward the end, depending on our time. But uh, I would be texting your teammates. I would be, you know, if you have a Facebook group with your team, I would be telling them to get on this thing because don't you want them to hit their goals? I mean, I think so. And uh, right now we have a, a pretty, you know, intimate crowd and uh, I would I would definitely try to get more people on here. Now, for me to start talking about setting and crushing goals, I really need to talk about what's the current and popular phenomenon. Like what is what is what is going on um, right now in the network marketing space or really, you know, anywhere else. And most people, they set goals with, uh, you know, this year I want to hit this, I want to hit that, I want to hit this. And many of the goals are things that they said the year before, but didn't hit. And it's rare, it's rare for someone to have any kind of actual breakdown or, or strategy to monitor their progress and so, you know, the reality is, um, the reality is most people get a few months into the new year, realize they're not any closer and they get discouraged. So I'm going to say that again, most people beginning of the year, 2017, January 1st, they set some big goals. Maybe they're similar to goals they had the year before. They don't have any kind of way to monitor any kind of actual strategy or plan to hit those goals. So they get a few months into the year. They get discouraged. Now, I'm just curious. You don't have to raise your hand on this, but does that sound familiar? That's what I found. That's most people. Most people follow that pattern and they do it year after year after year after year. Right? Their goal is to double their team or to quit smoking or to, you know, uh, make X number of dollars or, or whatever. And it's similar to the goal, they set, but they just don't hit it. 
And so let me give you some, you know, some examples. So, you know, I want to hit blank in, in the company, right? You want to hit a certain rank or I want to lose, you know, X number of pounds or I want to make X amount of money. These are all pretty common kind of goals that, that people set around the, you know, around a new year and set new year's resolutions, et cetera. And uh, here's some questions that most people just don't ask. Well, if you have a goal to hit a certain rank in your company, how far away are you now and how many people per month do you need to grow? Now we can go even deeper on that. Okay. But most people can't even answer that. So, you know, I, I'll find people that say, Ray, you know, this, this year I'm going to hit, you know, whatever, right. Diamond ambassador, whatever. And, uh, you know, cause we coach people in all kinds of, of different companies and, and I'll, I'll just ask them, Oh, cool. Great. You know, how, how many people are you away right now? And how many people per month do you need, you know, to grow by to hit it? I've yet to meet someone that could answer that. Now, keep in mind, this is someone telling me, I didn't set the goal for them. They're telling me, Hey, I want to hit this right here, but they haven't even figured out what they need to hit that. And so what I find is that when people set the big goals without that kind of, uh, you know, intelligence gathering, right? Just the basic, okay. Then it's just kind of like a pie in the sky dream. You know, it's like someone saying, uh, I want to be a millionaire. And you know who won't actually say that? Who won't actually say that is the person that's on their way to be a millionaire. Because they're implementing strategies, they're executing habits, they're, they're doing tactics to ensure they get there. They're not just, they're not spending much energy and time saying how they're going to be, you know, this or that. They're actually executing, right? They're, they're running processes, they're hitting their habits, they're, they're, they have, you know, certain activities that they're, that they're active on. They're doing those things and in the back of their mind, they know that they'll get there, but they're going to keep doing these things until they do. Okay. Now, if you wanted to go an even step deeper, which no one does, right? I'm just being honest. Nobody does is if you knew how far away you were and you knew how many people per month you needed to grow, which most people don't. Well, if you went one step deeper and said, okay, on average, how many people do I need to prospect to bring in a new customer or recruit a new rep. And then you would actually have a pretty solid blueprint. If you know that you got to talk to, you know, um, hundred people to get five people and you need 10 people a month. Well, it's 200 people. You're going to have to talk to every month. See how that works. But see, no one does that kind of, that kind of in intelligence gathering. I mean, hardly anybody. It's true. So if you want to lose X number of pounds this year, well, I'll tell you what is, uh, you know, and, and I'm, and I'll share a little bit of, of my story. So what is really overwhelming to most people is when they say things like, I want to lose 30 pounds. 30 pounds is a pretty massive amount of weight. It really, it really is. And you know, this past I have, because of some, my upbringing, you know, I didn't have the greatest childhood and you know, I, uh, most nights I went to, went to sleep thinking about, food and thinking about, you know, not because we were broke, but just because, um, kind of a long story, but, uh, my stepmom wasn't the nicest of, of people. And, uh, so I would go to bed thinking about, you know, man, I'm, oh, man, I'd love to. So I created an association with food to freedom, right? So my entire life, my weight has kind of gone up and down, up and down, up and down. I've been all the way up to 255 pounds. And, uh, then here recently I've been all the way down to 188. And, uh, you know, right now I'm in a, a, a pretty good state in that I'm right at the weight I was at in uh, high school and I'm, and I'm, you know, feeling pretty good, but I'll tell you what's overwhelming is lose 30 pounds. That's overwhelming. It really is. And, but if you can break it down, if you can break it down and ask yourself, okay, to hit that, what do I have to do? You know, what isn't overwhelming one to two pounds a week. You do one to two pounds a week, you'll get there. And you can also monitor that. You can know your progress. You can know, you know, what did I do yesterday that was, you know, that was bad and that I need to avoid today. And so, you know, I will, I will tell you, I actually do, uh, you know, monitor my weight every single morning. I weigh myself and I pretty much know what it's going to look like based on the, the, the previous day's activities. 
but it keeps me in check so it doesn't get away from me. And that's something that I'm going to tell, tell you the difference, okay? Some people, they look at their results as an encouragement or discouragement factor. This is, this is if you can get this concept, you're going to be better than probably about 90% of network marketers, no joke, okay? So let me say that again. Most people, they, they analyze the results, okay, as an encouragement or a discouragement factor. Now, the problem with that is, in anything, most of the times, if you're pursuing something worthwhile, you won't get massive results in the beginning, and you usually won't get massive results quickly. If you use it as an encouragement or a discouragement factor, then one of two things happen, right? One, you get upset, right? You're upset because you've been doing, you've been prospecting people or you've been working out, or you've been doing, doing whatever, and you're, you're not seeing results. So you're, you're discouraged. Or, and this is a, a totally different problem that affects about four to five percent of the population. And that is, if you actually happen to create success, well then, if you're looking at results as encouragement or discouragement, then you can actually uh, use it to get lazy. I know a lot of people that hurt certain, uh, that hit certain dollar amounts in their business or hit certain numbers in their in their team, and all of a sudden they feel like they made it, they're set. Well, I still think there's people to impact, right? So results have nothing to do with my level of encouragement or discouragement at all, period, zero. Now that's different than 90, at least 90%. 90% would be conservative. I'd probably say 97%, okay? I would say 97% of network marketers, they use their results as their encouragement or discouragement factors. And the truth is they should be using them as guidelines on what to do activity wise. So if I'm not getting results yet, I know that I just need to continue the process. Maybe I step back and say, okay, are my activities, if, if I continue these activities, um, are they equipping me to succeed? Or do I need to analyze my activities? I don't use them as I need to analyze my emotions because that's it's pointless. Okay. And so, but but most people not getting results, sad face. This isn't working. That's how most people operate. That's how most people lose in life. Okay. I can tell you that I know um, probably, probably the one of the more the more the most recent example is I met a guy. All right, I know him. I mean, I, I, I met him a couple of years ago, but, I, but I've known him for a few years. And this guy got like 400 no's before he got a yes. And today is a million dollar a year earner. So that would be one very clear example. I, would, I can tell you without a doubt, 90 to 97% of network marketers, if they got 100 no's, would quit. They'd drop out of the business, right? They got 200, forget about it. 300, they're on suicide watch. This guy over 400 is now a million dollar a year earner. And that was just over a couple of years time span. So that's, that's what you guys need to understand is results is, is a, let me analyze or continue my activity, not a, should I be sad face or, or celebrate? Okay. And so I always look at when I, you know, when I weigh in each morning, I know, all right, do I need to be a little stricter today or can I uh, maybe have those dark chocolate almonds, right? That's my, that's my weight. But when it comes to network marketing success, you may look at, you know, Hey, you know, I didn't, I, I'm looking at my team. It didn't grow yesterday or it didn't grow last week. Okay. Let me analyze my activities. How many people did I prospect? How much did I work on my education? How many teammates did I communicate with? Did I show up to the webinars and the calls? Very different than how people that struggle with success actually analyze their time and analyze their results. Okay. Next, I want to make X amount of money this year. Most people are pretty ridiculous when it comes to this. So again, I see this all the time where someone's like, you know, Ray, I'm going to make a million dollars this year. Okay, cool. Great. Congrats. You know, I, I Awesome. You know, how much you make last year? 20 G's. Well, I'm not saying it's not possible, right? There are certainly people that went from $20,000 in a year 
to a million dollars, I'm sure they exist somewhere, right? I, I don't know that I've met that. Um, I, I don't think so. Now I've seen massive, massive growth, um, but let's let's break that down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's take just a, just a second, because if you really analyze a million dollars a year, not a lot of people actually have, that would be right around $80,000 a month. That means you would have gone from 20,000 in a year to 20,000 in a week, okay? Is it possible? It's possible. Is it likely? It's not very likely. The problem with it is that I don't want you to set yourself up for constant discouragement. You actually, if you focus on progress and you think long-term, I want you to set yourself up for celebrations. I want you to set yourself up for wins and, and you know, try just thinking that throwing out some humongous goal out there that is totally off kilter from where you, you know, currently are, um, there's a way to do that, but not normally the way most people do it. Not normally. And, I, and I'll explain what I mean, because I see that there's three types of goals that I think are powerful for you to actually set, but most people either don't set any of them or uh, set one of them, but they set it in the wrong category. And you'll, you'll see what I mean. Helpful so far? Gary, do you think this is helping some people? Are we on the right track? Absolutely, and I'm seeing some of their comments. Uh, that's deep, yes, absolutely, right? Okay. <laughs> cool, good, all right. Makes sense so far, good. All right, so if you don't have a broken down strategy attack for big goals, more than likely you're not going to hit them, more than likely. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying that there's been people that just kind of wander through life and just, you know, great things happen to them. It, it's just not likely, right? It's it's certainly possible, just not very, that's not very likely. So here's some goal setting tips, all right? Look at your previous year, look at your goal, okay? And then see what needs to happen each month to stay on track. What needs to happen? And I want you to be okay with maybe you need to alter your goal, right? Now, this is very different from me saying lessen your dreams, okay? I'm never going to tell you to lessen your dreams. I'm never going to tell you to, you know, shoot lower, right? I'm never going to tell you to shoot for smaller goals, but... I'm going to teach you to do them a little differently. Okay. I'm going to teach you to do them a little differently. I don't have a problem with humongous goals. None. And I'll, and I'll share a couple of mine that at the time of setting them made no logical sense. Zero. None. And so I'll share with you some of mine that I've had over the years that, um, that I've accomplished. That, uh, that I had no way of hitting when I set them. But... I set them differently than how most people do, and we'll we'll talk about that. Now, one thing that nobody talks about, no one, one thing that nobody talks about, but is very, very important for you to get, is when you don't hit the goals that you set, you break your word with yourself, and that can become a habit. This is critical. Now, nobody talks about this. Nobody. No one talks about the importance of your word. Your word is important. Now, how most people view that as, well, if I tell someone I'm going to do something, I, you know, I should do it because, you know, that'd be keeping my integrity. Well, the most important integrity is the integrity you have for yourself. Okay. Your word with yourself is very, very important. And what's happening is you're conditioning yourself to either believe you or not believe you. And when you are, um, when you are, you know, saying that you're going to accomplish things, you're going to go after things that you're going to do things or quit things or not do this or, or do this. When you get in the habit of not really caring if, if you actually do those things or not, you lose a small percentage of belief in yourself. You actually start doubting yourself. You create the doubt. And I can tell you this. I can tell you this right now. If you doubt yourself right now, which if we were all being honest, we all do in some way, shape, or form, right? Some, some greater degrees. 
but I can tell you how you chip away at that is you actually start setting things that you go out and you hit and you make it happen. And you can create goals in a totally different way to allow that to happen. You really can. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that, but the thing that you really, really gotta own is your word is power. And your word is not just power with other individuals. That's how everyone looks at it. They look at it as, you know, uh, is this person trustworthy? Well, are you trustworthy to yourself? Do you trust yourself that if you go on a mission to go accomplish something that you're going to continue that mission no matter what? That's the question. Do you have power with word and integrity with yourself. That is more important. Now, obviously, it's important for you to be honest with people. It's important for you to, you know, if you say you're gonna do something, you'll do it, right? But what's most important is that word with yourself. Don't don't lessen that, don't weaken that. Don't think that, oh, you know what? No one's holding me accountable to what I tell myself. Yeah, they are, you are. And no matter where you go, there you are. The most important person to have integrity with is yourself that is the linchpin if you're going to succeed it is going to be up to you it's not going to be you know, gary's not flying into your your city to make the calls for you to do the setups for you right that's you you are the most important person to have integrity with out of anybody in your life very important what leads when you when you lack that you tend to find other issues in other people you tend to find other things to blame other other excuses and you just doubt yourself and when you doubt yourself there is no level of training i can do for you that's going to help you out there is no level of outside external help you know everyone wants to know how to do this how to do that what to say here what to say here if you doubt yourself none of that stuff matters it doesn't matter what training you go through you got to work on that and and you know there are ways that you can improve that that, that we'll talk about now if you stop believing in yourself one why should anyone else believe in you? Number one. And number two, how will you transform your life? It's just not going to happen. So here's a couple suggestions for you to, to help you with the belief in yourself. One, set goals you feel good about and can hit, but will move you toward what you want in your life. And number two, crush goals by playing bigger and learning new skills that will impact how you show up. You know, a lot of people, they, they say things like, well, I'm just not a salesman. Or, well, I'm just not good at public speaking. Or, well, I'm just not good at communications. Um, those are all skills. Those are all things that can be learned. You know, I was terrified and terrible at public speaking the majority of my life. I mean, I think I was, uh, let's see, I, I believe I got over that fear maybe when I was like 25 or so, maybe 26. And um, I, I wasn't born some fantastic public speaker. And I also sucked at sales too. I had to practice, I had to study, I had to get books, I had to get courses, I had to get mentors. I had to work on those skills. It wasn't that I was born with something that other people don't have. And, I, and you know, there are people out there, there are people out there that are naturally gifted. And I can tell you this, most people, I won't say all, but most people that are naturally gifted really struggle with perseverance and focus. So I know a lot of people that success comes very easily to them, but there's a cap because they all their life have associated what they can accomplish with their natural ability. See, I only look at what I can accomplish by perseverance because that's what I've had to do. I've had to persevere. And so what can you accomplish when you persevere? Anything, anything you want. There's nothing in life that you can't accomplish by being a persevering soul. But if you uh, govern, I can only accomplish that which my natural abilities can help me uh, achieve, then you're always gonna have a cap on where you can go, right? And this is why that they've done studies now uh, one of them, I'll just the, you know, the most recent book I saw it reference is uh, called uh, 30 million words by Dana Susskind, where they suggest against telling your uh, baby or telling your, your small child how uh, gifted they are or, in, or brilliant they are, or how genius they are, or giving them lots of accolades around natural ability. They suggest instead 
to focus on giving uh, kudos and love on uh, perseverance, right? If your child continues to try to do something, that's when you actually applaud them. That's when you actually say, way to keep trying, way to, man, you're such a good trier, you keep going, way to go. They say do that instead of natural ability. When you, when you uh, only con congratulate and focus on natural ability, then they grow up thinking, oh, okay, then what I can accomplish is equated to my natural ability. So whatever comes naturally to me, I should pursue and whatever doesn't, I, I don't. Very different thinking, but they've done study after study after study after study. These are scientific studies that they've done around this. So perseverance is key. If you're going around thinking that, boy, I wish I was like, you know, that person, man, they're so smart and intelligent and quick-witted, right? One, chances are they weren't born that way and they had to work their butt off, okay? Uh, but number two, just realize you can accomplish anything you want. You can accomplish anything that you want with the steadfastness to stay committed to get better at that thing, okay? So I really hope you get that. Now, three sets of goals, okay? Uh, most people set one kind of goal and they set it weekly. They set it like weekly, meaning uh, wimpy, not uh, like weekly as in the, the time period. Uh, but they set annual goals. Most people set annual goals. 2017, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to grow this. I'm going to lose this, whatever. Right. And they did the same thing last year and uh, didn't hit them. Most people do that. The second one is long term. Now, some people set this, but they don't write them down. They don't really put energy into them, uh, but they're extremely powerful. So I'll give you, I'll give you two examples that are uh, one's one's a fun one, and one's a very, uh, um, very, you know, I guess meaningful one to me. So let's let's do the fun one first. A couple months ago, I was cleaning out my uh, my backpack. I got a new, uh, you know, like backpack for my laptop and all my stuff because I travel a lot. So I like the backpack kind of nice. And uh, so I've had this backpack for years and years and years. And I got a new backpack. It was transferring my stuff over. And I may I may have shared this on one of the calls. I, I, I don't recall. But um, in the bottom of this backpack, I found a folded up piece of paper, all folded up and unfolded it. And it was a bunch of goals that I had set. Now, I, I didn't put timelines to them. I, I Unfortunately, the only thing I really wish I did do was I didn't put the, the date that I wrote them. But based on looking at what I wrote, I'm guessing that this was somewhere around 2009, maybe, maybe early 2010, right? So 2009, 2010, I was in personal foreclosure. I was, um, you know, just kind of, I had gotten reintroduced to network marketing. I was, you know, really in a, in a rough spot. And, you know, I always kind of giggle when people say, man, I was $30,000 in debt. I was over a million dollars in debt, right? So literally, uh, you know, someone living on the street is, is worth a million dollars more than me. <laughs> Think about that because I'm negative a million, right? Over a million. And, you know, because of my real estate debt, I'd bitten off more than I could chew. I was in personal foreclosure. It was a rough state. It wasn't great. And, um, but I wrote these goals, right? From this place of, I shouldn't have, I guess. Um, I wrote these goals. And so some of them were, um, you know, just like kind of, you know, social media goals. I mean, I had on there, I want to have, uh, I think I said, I want to have 50,000 fans on, on Facebook, right? Because I equated that as some kind of, you know, great milestone. Um, you know, we now have 200,000. I said I want an email list of 50,000 people. We now have over 200,000 there too. And I wrote a couple other family things, a couple other things. But then one really stood out. It really stood out. And it was a little eerie. It was a little eerie. And that is, uh, it said, I'm so happy and grateful that I have a 50... 5,300 square foot home on the water in Fort Myers. Now, at the time, I'm in personal foreclosure, right? I'm not on the water. I am at that point in Fort Myers. I'm now, I now live in Estero, and we've been in this house for about, you know, two and a half years. And here's the wild part. 
when I unfolded that, that sheet of paper, uh, we had just closed on a home on the water in Fort Myers, and it's 5,400 square feet. Now it's being built right now, so I'm not I'm not in it yet. I'm still in still in our our, our house we bought a couple of years ago. Um, but how powerful is a long term goal? I mean seriously, I mean 5,300, 5,400 on the water, Fort Myers. Now I mean we're not even in that city right now. We're in Estero, right, a little bit uh, south of, of Fort Myers. It's crazy. So way too few people dream big. Now was that a big dream? Could I have hit that in a year? Could that have been an annual goal? I really don't think so, right? I, I hate to put a cap on possibility, but from foreclosure and a million dollars in debt to that kind of house, even I have reservations saying that that's possible in a year. But what's possible long-term will blow your freaking mind. Now, let me tell you the one that's more meaningful. Throughout my life, I've had mainly not great relationships okay with with women and you know i in, in all throughout high school i dated a lot of girls my longest my longest relationship was i'm pretty sure 30 days and um you know i i uh, totally fell in love with this one girl when I, my uh, one of my i think my second job after high school and she just ripped my heart to pieces right just totally destroyed me and um and i went you know in another direction um, you know, and, and, and was married for, for six years and, uh, you know, went through a divorce and I was at, and then I got engaged and then got disengaged. And so I had had a very long pattern of not being in great relationships. And a friend of mine, who I'm, 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 I'll always be forever grateful to, he said, he goes, dude, you just need, he's kind of a hippie. He's like, dude. You just need to look at all of your relationships you've had over those past years and write down what's every trait you actually want in a significant other. And I never, I never thought about it that way. See, I had learned a lot. I had, I definitely learned what I didn't want. Right. Um, and so I started, I'm like, all right. So I started making this list. Now I didn't have a time must meet this girl by 34 days. Right. I didn't, that's strange. Um, I didn't have that, but I wrote down some things that were lacking, right? There were, there were certain highlights in some of the relationships, but there were always some low lights too. So I wrote down, uh, must have a sense of humor, must appreciate my boys. You know, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I was in a relationship where, uh, this person didn't, you know, didn't really appreciate my, my older sons and, you know, shame on me for ever even being in that relationship, but I was a little, little cuckoo. And so, you know, appreciates my voice, has a sense of humor, gets along with my friends, has gratitude, is motivated, is beautiful. Of course, I have, you know, I, I, both sides of the coin, right? Emotionally, physically, wrote down all these, these different things. Like the house goal and the social media goals and the family goals and things that the piece of paper, I uh, put this on a piece of paper, fold it up, and I put it somewhere. Didn't even remember. So life goes on, right? I forget about this list and life just you know happens, life goes on. And so I don't know exactly because I keep forgetting to date these darn things. And I highly suggest that if you write some long-term goals and I'm gonna encourage you to date it so that when you find it, like you don't have to study this thing every single day. And I kind of like my thing of how I find these things around, um, but date it because it will give you some uh, even deeper context, okay? So made this big long list, shoved it away. My guess is maybe six to eight months later is my guess. I don't know for sure because there was no date. But six to eight months later, uh, me and my girlfriend, right? I had a new girlfriend. Me and my girlfriend are uh, moving out of the house that I was in foreclosure in. Now, she wasn't. It was, it was my, my deal. And we're moving into a place together, right? We're renting a place. And I'm cleaning out the kitchen drawers. And what's in the very back of one of the kitchen drawers is this folded up piece of paper. I, I unfold it and I, and I start crying because every single bullet, every bullet, there wasn't, there wasn't one that was like, oh, well, you know, 
every single bullet described my wife, my now wife, Jessica, to a T. Every bullet. There was not one bullet on there that said must have, you know, I don't know, lots of freckles or something like that, right? There's not one bullet on there that didn't describe her to a T. And in fact, one of the really important things, you know, everyone has different love languages, right? And if you, you know, if you're not aware of that term, you may want to read that book, you know, the, I believe it's called the five love languages. Great book. They have it for kids too. Five, the love languages for kids. Great book. And my language is I love, I love being of service. Okay. And so I do, I do romantic things. I do, I do little gifts. I, I like to buy flowers. I like to do, I like to do those kind of things. I like to do uh, those things to make whoever I'm with, um, you know, happy and smile. The problem is I had literally never been in a relationship where someone actually appreciated that. And so it, you know, it bugged me. And so one of the bullets was has gratitude. And I remember the day that I fell, um, irresistibly in love with with Jessica and that is she was um, she had gone to work she was working at that at that time she was working for an insurance company that was before Nordstrom when we were very dating very early on and she had gone into work wasn't feeling that good and I brought her in some soup I just brought I thought eh, I'll be nice bring her in some soup and I brought her in some soup some tea and something else crackers or something like that and when I walked in and she's like what are you doing here you know and she's like not feeling good I'm like, oh, I brought you some stuff. I know you're not feeling good. She was so grateful. She cried like tears coming out. I'd never experienced that. And that's when I fell irresistibly in love with her. Would that have happened if I didn't set a long term goal to have a great relationship? I don't think so. I really don't. And for those of you who are in a relationship and maybe you don't feel that it's great or maybe it's not your ideal dream relationship. I'm going to give you two things. One, if you start to have gratitude for who you have in your life and you can do it in secret, okay, you can do it in secret. You can make little notes or you can even write little notes about what are you grateful for in that person? Because what I've found is most people, the longer their relationship, the more things they find that's wrong with the other person. Well, they didn't take out the garbage. Well, there he goes, leaving his socks again. Right. I found that the longer people are in a relationship, most people, they see, let's find all the things wrong. OK, you start having gratitude and every day, even silently, you don't have to tell them. Right. But just kind of to yourself, you know, what? I'm grateful they actually go to work. They have a, a job. You know, I'm grateful that, uh, you know, they massage my feet from time to time if they do that sort of thing. I'm grateful that they bought us, bought me tickets to the movies. Right. I'm grateful they like to watch my TV program with me. OK, start having little gratitude things. Okay, little gratitude things, and you'll be amazed at how they change. You'll you'll be amazed that when we change our expectations of others, they magically change. It's like we're a, a wizard, an enchantress. Isn't that cool? The second thing is, I think, uh, and I actually, I, I'm probably going to share this on my Facebook page. I saw, uh, I think it was, uh, I want to say Zig Ziglar. I think I heard, I saw said said this, and and it says more relationships would uh, would be great. If the husband and the wife or the boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, or whatever, right? The significant others, um, if they realize they were on the same team, you're on the same team, you know, and, and, and remembering that is, is very important. And I know we kind of went, went a little bit off, off guard here of setting your business goals to crush Saba, right? But if I can help you be more congruent and more powerful in your life, then guess what? You're going to hit other goals. There'll be collateral benefits of you showing up more powerfully when you talk to a prospect and they see that you're more in love or they see that you're more grateful or they see that you're more powerful and they'll actually want to work with you more. Okay. So long-term goals, set them, write them down, date them, and then tuck them away. Okay. And then there's monthly goals, which hardly anybody sets. These are my, these are actually my favorite type because there's something that you can have so much control over. So they're broken down to take you through the annual goals. Okay, so you have an annual goal of hitting, you know, losing 30 pounds or, um, you know, hitting whatever crown, black diamond, whatever, whatever it is that you're you're hunting for, and you've broken down. Okay, what will it take to get there? And then you've broken down the 
uh, habits of what you need to do to get there, okay? What you need to do to get there. So if you know that you need to grow your team by um, you know, 30 a month to hit that, then you're going to reverse engineer and figure out, okay, you know, I, I, uh, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're really good, maybe you're really good, and you get, you know, 10% of the people that you, uh, that you talk to. Well, okay, 10%. That means you got to talk to 300 people. 300 people divide that, right? You got to figure that out. Now, when I talk about skill sets, you can always improve that. I would say that most people left to their own devices that don't have a sales background that you know, um, just are really, really awkward talking to people, probably do about 5%, okay? About 5%, you talk to 100 people, you probably get about five customers or, or new recruits. But you can work on that and, and get to 10 without much of a, of a big deal. Uh, most of your best recruiters, I've had, over the years, I've probably had at least, I've had at least four people, maybe five people that I know in my team that personally recruited over 500 people. Now I've, I've recruited some big, big recruiters. I've probably had maybe 25 people that have recruited in my teams that have recruited over hundred people personally, right? Um, those kind of super recruiters, probably about 30%, right? That means one out of three. That's, that's a really good percentage. Um, you know, one out of 10 is a more normal percentage. One out of 20 is you're just kind of getting started. You probably should invest in some, you know, some recruiting kind of stuff. All right. We got, uh, we got pretty deep on that one. Helpful. Is this good so far? We still got more to go. <laughs> I think I, Andrea, I probably could be a relationship counselor. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I try to mix this stuff into business too. <laughs> cool. All right. So I talked about 90 days when we first started this, this, this journey. And, uh, you know, as we, as we get closer to, to the conclusion here, uh, I've probably given you some things to help you analyze your goals and help you look at, okay, did I set reasonable goals or was I total off, uh, you know, off the planet earth here? Um, and, and maybe it means adjusting your goals and that's okay. I would rather you adjust a goal to be something that you can celebrate along the way. If you, if you have, if, if I can get you in a, this is such a good word, just came up with it, a celebratory progress. If I can get you in a celebratory progress, you will crush everything in your entire life. Most people are in a discouraging digress. <laughs> Most people are in a, well, I didn't hit the number today, right? They're like Eeyore off Winnie the Pooh. My my daughter just started watching. She started getting into Winnie the Pooh, so I'm 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 catching some Eeyore, and it cracks me up, right? I was watching this episode, this Christmas episode, and someone asked Eeyore, "What what do you want for Christmas, Eeyore?" And he says, "Well, I'd like an umbrella to keep the snow off me, but if I don't get it, that's okay, right?" It's just like the Eeyore. Some people are Eeyore of, of network marketing, right? They're constantly negative, and so most people are in a discouraging digress. They're like, well, I'm no closer to my goals today, right? Be in a celebratory progress and have goals that you can actually control. Regardless of what I tell you, the thing that you can't control, you can't control how many recruits you get. Can't do it. I, I can't do it. I can never do it. What can I control? How many people I talk to. If I know on average, that, you know, I, I, you know, back in the day when I was, you know, really at it, I would get, you know, two to three people out of 10, two to three people out of 10 that I talked to, I would get them, you know, involved in my business and, and as a customer or, or a rep. So if I know that I'm going to go, maybe I go and approach 10, maybe I would like to get two to three, but I have no idea. Do you realize there are, there, there are patterns, right? There are streaks. So there were days when I went after 10, 20, 30, 40, no signups, I suck. And then the next 10, I get seven. It averages out. But I can't control how many customers I get. I can't control how many recruits I get, but I can't control uh, exactly what I do. 
I can control how many people I talk to. I can control how many messages I send, how many phone calls I make. I can control how many people I approach. That I can control. I can't control who says yes. And that's what, if you, if all of your goals are tied to, especially those, those important 30 day goals, if all of your goals are tied to results, okay, results, then it's pretty easy to get into a discouraging digress. If they're tied to habits, okay? So if you associate, maybe you wear a, maybe wear a Fitbit and you associate that, you know what? I'm gonna lose this weight. I'm gonna hit at least 10,000 steps. I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna go and, and do, uh, you know, whatever, 10 minutes on the exercise bike. I'm gonna do 100 sit-ups. You can control all those things, okay? If you say I'm gonna sk I'm gonna start skipping dessert, you can control that. What you can't control is I'm gonna lose two pounds every day. Let me tell you, I, that's not easy, right? That's not easy to lose two pounds a day. You know, it, it's much more powerful if you look at what habits you can control in business and in life. Okay, you want to improve a relationship? Do you realize you can have goals around that too? Okay, I'm gonna tell them I love them three times today. I'm gonna do one surprise nice thing for them today so when she wakes up you know what i'm gonna do the dishes i'm gonna do the dishes before she wakes up you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna plant a new flower for her right or i'm a you know he, he didn't ask me but you know i know he likes cheese steak i'm gonna make him a cheese steak tonight without him asking for it okay so you can have habits that can in, increase uh, that that will almost dictate you getting a new result in life and business and weight, money, whatever it is, okay? But you can't control the result. You can't say, I'm going to make them really happy today. Can't control that. You just can't control it. You don't know where their mind's at, but you can control what you do. You can control that you do something nice for them, a little neck massage or something like that, right? There you go. So let me give you some suggestions. Next 90 days, month one. I'm, and this is just what serves me. There isn't a day that goes by, none, zero. This is why we continue to grow. This is why, you know, we didn't hit, um, you know, a million dollars in a year and then say, we made it, we made it. Now it's time for, you know, lemonade and hammocks. Let's do this. No, we, we hit it, but then we kept going. I mean, since, let's see, three, yeah. Since we hit a million dollars in a year, we've had a 529% growth over the last three years. And that's what landed us on, on the 5,000. And so, you know, it's this deep education each day. There isn't a day where I'm not reading a book, listening to an audio book, going through a course, speaking to a mentor or a coach. There isn't a day where I'm not doing that. And you're doing that right now. So, you know, congrats. What are you going to do tomorrow? Do you have books lined up? Do you have courses lined up? Do you have an event you're going to? Do you have a webinar you're hopping on? Right. You know, we, um, you know, our company, we provide training every single day through blog posts, through podcasts, through Facebook lives, through Periscope. We do these things every single day because I know that there's a lot of people in my profession that needed impacting. And I know that there's a lot of people hungry for success and, you know, maybe they don't have a, a place to, to plug in for that. OK, so month one, deep education each and every day, prospect X per day. If your goal is to hit a new rank or increase your business or increase your money, where does money come from? Does it come from automatic marketing systems or does it come from human beings? It comes from people. So you, if you're going to make more money in the network marketing profession or really in a profession, you're going to need to communicate with some people. And so, you know, deep education is day prospect X per day, and there is no right or wrong. So, you know, if you're, if you're going to reach out to two people per day, fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. You see, you know, most people do network marketing very part time, not, not full time. Okay. Have a favorite form of exercise. I would highly suggest that you do some kind of exercise. You know, the thing about this, uh, this Fitbit here, there's a setting on it that if you're, um, if you're, uh, like dormant, okay. Just like, you know, couch potato, if you're dormant, you can set this as a setting, but if I'm dormant for, I think like, uh, like 30 minutes or something like that, it'll like buzz me and be like, Hey, lazy boy, you know, get up and do something. And so, you know, if I'm like watching a movie with my wife or something, I may get up and do some like kicks or, or do some like shoulder things or, or whatever. It kind of reminds me to stay, stay active. That, that helps you burn more calories. Okay. Uh, but have a form of exercise that increases the blood circulation, 
decreases your uh, your sickness in your body. You know, someone asked uh, Richard, Sir Richard Branson, you know, billionaire guy started, you know, Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, everything else. And uh, they asked him, they're like, what's your number one tip for someone to be more productive? And he said, exercise, exercise, because if you, you exercise, you get the blood flowing, you're less likely to be in the hospital, which knocks you out of the game. So have some kind of exercise and write your goals. Now, this is something you don't, you know, you're not doing every day. You don't have to, you know, write this every day, but you did take the time to say, what am I going to hit this year? Let me break that down. What do I need to do each month to hit to, to be in alignment with those goals? What habits do I need to have to hit them? And what's my long term? What's my dream? You know, you want you want to live in the Bahamas? Then write that down. Who, who's to say you can't? You want to uh, take your your family around the world every year? Who's to say you can't? But that may be more of a long term goal. Maybe you don't have a I must hit this by X. Okay, uh, month two, same thing as above. But maybe you start giving homework to your teammates or maybe start connecting with those that are producing on on your team and have a little mastermind with them. Maybe you consider running an accountability group. Very, very powerful. Running a, a 14 day accountability group where you uh, you get people to commit. And, you know, my favorite uh, definition of commitment is uh, commitment is doing the thing you said you would do long after the mood you said long after the mood to do it has passed. That's by George Zalicki, right? So we all, we all, a bunch of people set commitments, but I assure you there's going to be a time when the mood that had you set that commitment is toast. Are you still committed? <laughs> Most people aren't, right? So maybe you have an accountability group and you say, hey, to participate in my accountability group, you got to agree to at least prospect two people a day, three people a day. Do you know if, if more people prospected two to three people a day, your business would triple? Most people, they prospect zero per day most people they may prospect one person a week if you prospect to two to three people a day it's not comfortable but your team would go sky high and go crazy so very very powerful and then uh, month three same as above but now maybe you enlist an accountability group to, to run hard for 14 to 28 days so now you're starting to incorporate more people maybe you have you know three people that during your first accountability group, they pop their head up and they start rocking and rolling, have them run an accountability group for their for their teams. OK, so maybe you're running one with your leaders. Maybe you got, you know, two or three running their own with with their people. And now you're a well oiled machine rocking and rolling. You see, you can totally change your business. I don't care where it is. I don't care if your biggest leader left yesterday. I don't care if you're you haven't been seeing momentum. You can completely change it by just following these things that I talk about in the next 90 days. There's no question, guys. Okay? So the way that we have crushed our goals is by investing in our education and constantly working our skills and conversion percentage, constantly looking to get better. And, you know, this this is the thing, man. And I, and I kind of already covered this, but you have to have what habits do you need to that you can control? Do you need to monitor each and every day for you to go and hit those goals? And uh you know, I just want to say, you know, I, I hope I hope this was helpful. Was it helpful? Uh, if you alter if you need to alter your goals, know that that's OK. I would rather you have what celebratory progress. OK, I don't you don't have to set an annual goal that's going to impress everyone. OK, I think I think some people get a payoff. Like, you know what? I noticed that the bigger I tell people my goals are, the more impressed they are. Who cares who's impressed? I don't care who's impressed. Right. You know, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't that doesn't matter to me. I don't I don't pay my you know mortgage with someone's opinion. Right. I you know, so you don't have to set something that's impressive. And here's what I guarantee you. And I heard Tony Robbins say this and I, and I agree 100 percent is that usually we overestimate what we can accomplish in 12 months, but grossly underestimate what we can accomplish in five years. I don't know. If you will totally change and transform your life in the next 12 months, but I can tell you, no matter where you are, if you focus on these kind of principles and you start down this kind of path, your life will not, it just won't look the same. It just won't look the same as it, as it does right now, five years from now. I can give one, one uh, you know, quick example. In 2009, I worked very, very hard. I mean, I tried to pick up any any like little 
part-time deal that I could. I tried to do consulting. I started doing, you know, I, I started rocking with, you know, started rocking with network marketing toward the end of the year, but I made $19,000. Okay. That's what I made for the entire year. Well, um, guys, we, we now average that we average more than that every two days, every two days, our company generates about 24,000 and that's, you know, what, seven, six, seven years later, I can tell you our honeymoon was more than I made in 2009. I'm not saying that to brag and say, look at me, how awesome am I? I'm saying that because you can have that experience right now. You can have that if you keep going, if you keep trying, if you keep showing up, if you keep having celebratory progress, you can get there too, where you're sharing stories about, you know, you buying wick cheese. I remember those days about you struggling to pay the bill about every restaurant that you went to looking at the price tag and saying you know what I, I better not get the steak let me get the half chicken okay because you can't you you know that you can't afford the filet right and then get into a place where you no longer look at price tags you don't even care how much it, it was you know the other day i went to this uh tactical uh masseuse which hurt like hell but you know he's, he's a tactical masseuse and he he kind of cracked up when he said uh you know, hey, did my did my secretary tell you, you know, uh, you know how much it was going to be? And this was after the masseuse. I said, no, no, it's you know, it's okay. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I didn't, I didn't care what it was. I wanted it. And so you can create a life like that. Again, I'm not saying this to, you know, ooh, look at me. I'm saying it because I used to be dead broke. I used to be chased by bill collectors. I used to have to look at my Venetian blinds to see if there was a guy holding a clipboard there because I ain't answering it because I didn't have money. I remember the days when my girlfriend was working at the makeup counter to pay my utility bills. I remember those days and now I spoil the hell out of her and you can have a totally transforming life if you stay on this path. So I just want to say thank you very much. I really, you know, I believe in you guys. I know that Gary believes in you guys. And by the way, I forgot to say this. I say it on every call, but you guys, I really encourage you, uh, give some gratitude to Gary. I mean this, uh, and Saba, of course, the entire Saba, you know, team, uh, they clearly, care about you and they care about this company and they care about your team and they care about your progress or else they wouldn't have have paid the investment to have me on here because it is it is an investment you know we have a lot of companies that want us to speak for them so we have to charge a very large investment and so please know that you know i, I appreciate your your thank yous to me and and that's very nice and i accept them and and i appreciate it but please give some some love and attention and adoration for Gary and the whole executive team and Saba as a whole uh, because that's that's why we're here. Well, thank you, Ray. Uh, roll this, roll this back you. over to you, Gary. Yeah, th no, thank you. And uh, I can promise you worth every single penny. Uh, and obviously our uh, team members uh, certainly feel the same way. And, uh, appreciate <laughs> you. your time this morning. And uh, I know they're going to watch this